Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Project Destiny, which is one of our new Kerbal Space Program series. So we did a Kerbal Space Program series before, and it was pretty standard. However, with the release of 2.4, we've decided to take it into a different direction. Now, I want to try something new with Kerbal, and that is doing a more story-focused series, because for the most part, Kerbal Space Program is... a uh, is a pretty wide open sandbox, right? So what we want to do is add a story in there that not only makes sense, but is also intriguing and drives the gameplay. We're using a ton of mods in this one, which is why I've delayed the release of it so long. I was gonna do it two weeks ago, but I've been slowly getting mods working. We're still not quite there. There's a few that we need to work on still, but for the most part, we have most of our mods working and you can kind of see it already with some of the graphical stuff going on. The mods themselves are going to be listed. I'm on oswnetwork.com, which is our website. We're going to have a new mod section and stuff for like Wildstar and all that. All that will be listed of what mods I'm using, and I'll keep them up to date with what mods I'm currently using in Kerbal Space Program as well, uh, as well with you know links to the the pages for those mods to support the developers. Okay, so. Let's actually get started into the game. This is a fresh install to make sure all of my mods were working. So we're going to completely start a new one and Project Destiny. Uh, we're also going to use our custom flag that we built for this, which is just the same as the thumbnails, which I really appreciate. Now, the thing with 2.4 is it added a, oh, by the way, we're totally using TAC life support. So awesome and we're not allowing respawn. That'll all be explained in a second. Uh, so we're using the 2.4 currency system and this is definitely a career mode playthrough. So you get contracts and stuff and we'll explain that as we go for people who are new to 2.4 um, or patch 0.2.4, whatever it is. You know what I'm talking about. I don't need to explain it any further. But I figured while we get into it, just a brief little history on the story and i've said this in tons of stuff before that i do with story you know whether it be star wars or dragon age anything right if if you have a backstory you then are able to uh, i guess have motive right why are our kerbals going to space why other than to go to space i mean right that's pretty awesome but why are they doing it and so i figured i'd come up with a story for that so on screen i'll have an annotation that will skip you right through it you'll miss most of the story uh, which is pretty important but if you don't want to listen to it get straight to the gameplay you can do that okay so let's get started so the Kerbal government has two major things going on right now so you've got this weird uh, I guess tension in the Kerbal government. There's a world government and the reason why there's a world government is because the, the planet is so freaking small. You know, the Kerbal or Kerbin is, is, is quite small in comparison to say planet Earth, right? Uh, you know, if you look at the continents here, they're, they look kind of big from space, but they're actually not that large. So it's easier to maintain and create a world government because there's the the neighboring bodies are much closer and it's easier for trade, right? So that's just government wise that just helps out a lot. So the world is within a a world government. However, it's split into two peoples, uh, into two belief groups, as you will. One of them is the Naturians, and the other is the Synethians. Now. The Naturians have their own belief system, and the Synethians, you could say, are more religious in aspect. But the current world agenda is more on the Synethian side, because there is 78% Synethians and 22% Naturians. There's little weird belief systems here and there in between that, but it's you're talking like 0.5% of people, and those are the people that live out in the ocean on boats and stuff. They're really, really weird compared to all the other Kerbals, right? It's, it's it, it gets awkward when they have to meet together for, for banquets and stuff, and usually the awkward people get kicked out, and it's usually just the Synethians and the Naturians finally agreeing on something. But the let's let's talk about the Naturians, right? Because they're the, the 22%. They are fairly limited in how much uh, how much sway they have in the, the government of Kerbin. So 
they are under the belief that they evolved from a microscopic organism on Kerbin itself. But they also believe that the Synethians are oppressing them for their beliefs, and they re keep referring to the poor Naturians as uneducated. Right, so the Synethians, you kind of get a, a good idea of what they're they're like when when in the presence of a Naturian. They think that they're better than them. It's it's more of a, a matter of education in the eyes of the Synethians, because the Synethians believe that they were created and they weren't the first people created. They're actually they believe that they're the second people created on Kerbin, and we'll get to that. But the Naturians, uh, they. They've got more of a conservative aspect as far as life is concerned. To them, every single Kerbal is valuable, whereas the Synethians are are willing to sacrifice people for their cause, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. But the, the major problem the Naturians have in their belief system is it's really hard for them to explain the existence of like relics and buildings and stuff that are actually on Kerbin th that have been found and have been, you know, I guess uh, almost archaeology, you know, archaeologified, whatever that thing is. They, you know, they've been studied and everything, and they can tell that a past people lived on Kerbin, right? They have a hard time explaining that. What they believe, though, is that it was you know all the relics and all, all the old architectures from a, an ancient race of kind of jellyfish like creatures that roamed on the the earth of of Kerbin, uh instead of in the water but you know eventually they started in the water and they came up out of it and they believe that they were destroyed because they made the same decisions that the Synethians are about to make. So let's talk about the Synethians, right? They're they're the more the religious type. They they believe, like I said, they were created on Kerbin from whatever it is. It, they they don't have a correct answer on it, but they do believe it is either some type of incredibly powerful aliens or some type of, you know, deity, some type of god. So they believe that they were created. However, they also believe that they weren't the first ones. The Synethians think that another race of Kerbals were created before them, and they were then destroyed by their creators because they failed to achieve their destiny. Now, the Synethians believe that the destiny imparted on them, put onto the, the people of Kerbin, is to expand to the outer reaches of their their little solar system into the galaxy and start basically colonizing other planets. So, you know, for instance, they they built a, a telescope system. They can look and see all these other planets. They haven't gotten close. They, they haven't even launched something out of their own planet's atmosphere yet. However, they do know of all these other planets because they've looked at them. And with really powerful telescopes, they can tell that these planets can be colonized. If they have the right technology, they can land on Duna and do this other stuff. And that that inspires them because they believe that that was their destiny. That's why they were created, was to go out and live on other planets. Major deal here. Now, they also believe if they don't do this, they too will be destroyed and the cycle will reset. And once again... They'll continue on the same line. You know, the people of whatever new, you know, I guess people are created on Kerbin. Their destiny is then to go off and and explore and colonize. And the Synethians believe that once they've done this, once they've achieved their destiny, they are uh, going to meet their creators and be rewarded with the knowledge of the universe. Right. So they they are really really adept in science because they want to do this they've been learning how to make rockets they're they're ready to go they're ready to start testing things and they are willing to sacrifice lives to get this done because they all believe that this is the right thing this is what they need to do however it gets a little a little uneasy as i said at the beginning because you have two groups of people butting heads the Naturians think that the synth or Synethians are going to destroy themselves, just like the jellyfish-like creatures before. And the Synethians believe that the Naturians are holding them back and that they don't want to know the knowledge of the universe. So 
in the government itself, you recently had a, a, an entire government vote and pass a bill to begin building the space program that we are about to impart upon ourselves called Project Destiny. And this is kind of where we're starting and playing. You know, Project Destiny was funded. It's ready to go. The world's industry and economy got a sudden boom with all the production starting. And small independent rocket corporations are on the rise. And they're getting ready to just give us a ton of parts and test them out. And that's why we're getting most of our contracts here from these people. You have larger companies, but you do have some smaller, you know, outskirts ones that are going to give us some different things that may help us along the way that uh, we otherwise wouldn't have. Have, you know, that's our mods. So we're explaining a lot of the the story through the mods and everything and all that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I have the modular Kerbal, um, I guess, whatever it's, I don't even remember what it's called. It's the, the colonization system. So we plan on definitely colonizing things. However, we start with the bill being passed. We're ready to go. We've got the go ahead. And right now, the Naturians, to us at the moment, are no threat. They they kind of have this uneasy piece. They're trying to outlaw the bills that were passed, and they're getting a little feisty. They're not, you know, sabotaging things yet, but it may be on the rise, and we gotta we gotta keep out or an eye out for that. But now that we've talked about the story, and hopefully you guys enjoy it, I don't know. I I like what I've come up with. I think it's fun. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do comics in the future but it's time to actually get started so if you've never seen 2.4 this is how it works you get all of these uh these contracts mm -hmm. and they give you money right so the money you use to purchase parts and that's how you get into space you complete more contracts you get more science and money and it's it's really quite cool so we're just going to pick all these up mm -hmm. we're going to launch a new mm -hmm. vessel we're going to set a an altitude record we want to escape the atmosphere and we want to orbit Kerbin. We are using Ferrum Aerospace, so some of the physics have been changed, which means our crafts, I guess, are more easily ripped apart. We're also using procedural fairings to uh, make sure we can get into space because of the whole Ferrum Aerospace. I'm not using the KW rocketry. I am using B9 for some of the aerospace parts because we're going to make space planes and everything, and it's going to be awesome. I've got a ton of space station stuff, so we can make like telescopes to observe the other planets before we head there, pick our landing spot if we want to start colonizing right away, and it's going to be great. We need to get our reputation up, though. And to start, we're just going to make a stupid simple craft. This is the exact same thing we did in the previous... Uh, series right at the beginning you kind of get a craft going and you don't really do too much right so we're just going to uh i may as well put this on all right there it doesn't really matter um we should we launch no i want i just want to get the science off of the the launch pad first so we'll do that get the science and we'll go back which means we should be able to start purchasing things so crew report you do this every time. Um, I want to EVA. There we go. Haven't played in a while. Pop off. We're going to EVA report. Keep data. We're going to take a surface sample. Keep data. We're going to get back in. We're going to recover vessel. I don't. Did I recover the. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Let's find out. Boom. By the way, uh, we're. We don't have respawn on, as we showed at the beginning. So. If one of our Kerbal size, they're dead, with the only exception being Jebediah and them. We're going to try not to use them uh, when we actually are launching things, however. Okay, let's purchase the first tier. Boom. Uh, we have seven science, but we can't really do anything with that, so it's fine to, or time to finally launch something. Okay, I think this will make for a really good launcher. We've called it the Hope. This is like their first real launch that they've ever done. It's Hope, right? It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so we have a parachute, we have a decoupler, we have two science things. We'll do uh, one when we land and one when we're in the air. And we'll do a recruit report when we're in the air. And we should be able to get quite a bit done. You're going to see the effects of Pharaoh Aerospace. The first time we launch. If you've been watching our old Kerbal series, you're going to notice it instantly, just the, the difference that it makes. Uh, also, we have totally new interface here with uh, all of this stuff, but I want to watch these contracts. If we can get 5,000 uh, altitude, that would be perfect. So everything is good. We don't really need to throttle up, but I will anyways. 
All right, if we can get, uh, actually, you know what? I'm on a crew report now. That's three science right away. I'm going to wait until our fuel is almost done. You see the, the air effects happening because of Ferrum. We're <laughs> going really fast at the moment. We don't want to escape trajectory here, so we're going to kind of turn ourselves off this direction. Oop, I want to be gentle with it, though. Now, let's kind of see our current trajectory. We're going real high, which is fine. Uh, actually, I'm quite okay with that. But we have lost, we've, we've had a, an aerodynamic failure, and we've lost our two science things, unfortunately. But that's fine. Luke Kerman, our first astronaut actually to go into space. We used a booster. We didn't need to. Uh, but we did achieve two of our contracts, which is great. So we can take it, and we'll just say, you know, thank you. We'll trash that, and thank you. Cool. Uh, we escaped the atmosphere, so we just completed another one, which is nice. And we have not achieved orbit. But what we do know is that this one part uh, given to us by one of the major rocket developers has has achieved, you know, orbital capabilities. Remember, the Sedathians are quite capable as far as science is concerned and they figured this out they were a little uneasy they didn't know if luke was just going to blow up as soon as he launched or anything we never really tested this booster but they were anxious to get somebody into space because they wanted to prove to the Naturians that it was possible and that they weren't all just going to die when they did it so let's uh let's speed this process up because it's going to take a while so as we come in hot, I wanted to point out on this resources panel, we have food, water, and oxygen. That's because we're using the TAC life support. So what this means for us is that when we send uh, longer missions out, the problem that we're going to run into more often than not is, uh, wow, we are just blazing fast here. This has actually come apart on us. So, ooh, we got to launch our parachute, but this is, oh. That's a bit painful. It's almost like pushed into our landing capsule here. That's not good. Uh, there it goes. Whoa, don't hit the parachute. It's good. We're good. I don't understand how we're falling faster than that, but, you know, I guess we'll take it. Uh, but the thing to remember is if we launch long missions, we actually need to load up on food and water, which is a concern because we don't want our Kerbals dying in space. So the colonization mod is going to make sure that once we land on like the moon and stuff uh, and we start colonizing it that we're going to have replenishable sources by using the moon itself the moon's resources to replenish our sources so it'll be quite interesting when we get to that point